but he he actually links work life balance with happiness and and determining de- determining how happy you are in your particular environment welcome to the business of parenting podcast tune in as we discuss the principles of successful parenting as a business professional here's your host jason harris hey 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 what's going on podcast nation it is jason harris here and thank you for joining me on another episode of bop the business of parenting project what a fun project this is and i have an amazing guest today i have the one the only Mr. Cameron Cresswell with me. Cameron, what's up? How you doing? Hey, good, mate. How are you traveling? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Hey, you're literally on the other side of the planet from me. Um, literally. <laughs> like, I think so. Like, almost like to the T, right? Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, what time mm. is it where you are right now? Uh, it's a little after 10 p.m. On a, uh, on a beautiful Wednesday. Okay, wow. So you're you're almost like an entire day ahead of me, Dan. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. You, you're going to have a good day today, Jason. If my day is any indication, brother. There you go. Okay, good. I'm glad it's coming my way. I appreciate you giving me that. Absolutely. Up on that. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Hey, Cameron. Thanks, man, for taking the time to jam with me. This is um, this has been a fun series to kind of record. You know, uh, you know, I, th- I think for a lot of us, especially in the automotive industry, but I think anybody out there that's an entrepreneur in any type of vertical. You know, just trying to navigate the world of parenting and family life. And it's like, I mean, we, we talk about the struggle of building businesses and like, you know, dealing with staff. And it's like, that is, it's, it's almost like the iceberg. You know, you know, you know, the iceberg, you, you know, that always that metaphor they always like to use, like you're, yeah, yeah, you're only yeah. seeing the tip of it, you know, yeah. and really, you know, the girth of what I think anybody in our particular shoes is dealing with is a lot at you know, at, at home with our families. And I just, I really appreciate you, man, to take the time and willing to come on and talk about it. Cause you know, I just, that's the point. That's you know, like, of this podcast. I'm not an expert. I'm 100, but not an expert on this. Right. Absolutely. I, 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 I fall into the same category. <laughs> right? Dude, I'm an expert at making mistakes. That's what I'm an expert. At. I'm like, this. yeah, but I yeah, just, I was going to suggest to you when you reached out to ask <laughs> me to be on this, I'm like, so sure, sure. You want my wife on this thing. You don't want me on this. Cause you know, well, she's, you know, when it comes to advice, mate, she's the she's the chairman of the board on that front. You know, I do have a couple podcasts scheduled here in the future that we're actually going to bring both the husband and the wife on. Uh, but which, boy, that'll be interesting, right? Um, but hey, let's you know what to kick off today's podcast. Um, you know, I love kicking off things with little origin stories. So let's find out kind of the origin story, you know, of yourself, your family, and and your business. Yeah. So um, so yeah, obviously, obviously, an automotive person just like you are, mate. And and you know, we've had many interactions over the years so you yeah, we're we're both we're both uh, byproducts of the same industry just in a in a slightly different hemisphere as it turns out but um i uh, i operate a, a business in it based in australia we, we service um companies all over the the asian pacific region as well as north america we provide um, talent acquisition services for the automotive industry across all the boards. So, um, yeah, generally speaking, anything from middle management up to up to C level senior management directorship, um, we consult with organisations to provide them with with great people. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as the backgrounds um, concerned, um, I'm 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 a byproduct of the automotive industry myself from a a family point of view so um I, li- I literally grew up in the industry our, our family it. were our family were ford dealers and had multiple ford dealerships when i was born um and born into the business and when my father was born my grandfather was a was a was a ford dealer and had multiple ford dealerships so um a third generation automotive person is the is is me and as I've uh, as I've said as I say quite often, uh, the category I put myself in from an automotive sense, at least, is is damaged goods from birth. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm a dad. I've got I've got three kids. Um, I've got uh, two two girls and a boy. Um, Lily's Lily's uh, seventeen, nearly nearly eighteen. Uh, Kalani's just turned fourteen, and uh, we got the young fella in Emerson who's. Um, Who's uh, twelve going on going on thirteen very soon? So, um, yeah, a an interesting an interesting cross section and and yeah, family family obviously is uh, is uh, is 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 something that I think 
you uh, you you learn on the fly. I think you mentioned in your in your opener that you know we're used to building businesses and and uh, you know when it comes to families, it's it's a um, you know I think for me when you said that the the two things that co- the the one thing that come to mind that correlate between the two is that when you when you're a, fa- a parent um, or when you're building your own business as a you know. Um, just starting out in the world, both things don't come with a with a user manual, as they say in the classics. No, they don't. Um, so, so, so yeah, you, you learn you learn as group, you go. Especially at the age group you have, I am my like my my oldest is just coming into that age range that your children are, and uh, man, a hundred percent. There's no owner's manual. Why is there not an owner's manual for this stuff? Right? Um, you know, she's a I'm calling her a tween. You know, she's not quite quite a teen, but boy. Oof. Some of the things that come out of that <laughs> mouth, um, but um, but you're right, man. It, it, it's 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 the business, and 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 I and I don't know. I don't know for myself or if if it's like this too. But once I've kind of approached this kind of I don't know this business mentality around you know how I parent, and, and so I actually kind of broke it out. Look, I'm a, I'm a little silly, and people will probably laugh at me a little bit for this, right? But I I look at my parenting as I kind of would my business. So how do I develop? coach and train all right my kids to be functioning adults i guess you know like i was telling you a little bit before we started recording i figured i got 18 years to put these kids out to market and the market's going to determine if they're a dick or not um (laughs) you know but like i like it (laughs) but i like it that's a perfect segue though kind of into our first topic though right you know does being a parent make us a better leader I think it's a great topic, man. But I love, I love to get your thoughts. I think for me, it, 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 it it's all a part of the experience gathering um, thing we do in life, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, we we gather experience from, you know, from everything that we expose ourselves to, and and you know, being a parent is definitely a part of that. Um, being being in business, managing teams, whether you're doing it for yourself or doing it for somebody else. Man, people find new ways of surprising us every day on that front, don't they? So, um, you know, it's 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 the world. I think the world now is is you know if you if you look back to the stereotypical business operator, you know, mm-hmm. th- thirty years ago it was a very directive style of leadership, and you know we all work as a team, we do it my way, and you know this is. You know, we, I speak the same to everybody, irrespective of who you are and where you are and, and what you are. But, you know, in the current, in the current world, you know, you've, as a, as a father, you've got to, um, you've got to communicate and, and at their level and, and find out what their collateral is and, um, you know, be able to have that effective level of communication and relationship. And, and to be honest, it's, it's exactly the same as if you're managing, managing your team, you know, you've, you've got to manage 100%. the individual and not, not, uh, you know, not have a, a one size fits all kind of approach to your management style. What do you think, Jason? You know, but you know what? I actually remember a podcast that we did a long time ago. We were talking a little bit about this because like I said, a, a big part of what you do is acquiring new talent, right? Um, Correct, and, yeah. and, and we were talking about like, you know, what does this, you know, next generation of, sales talent looking for, you know, sales or service talent, any type of talent, I guess, really, is, is, is they're looking for, um, they're looking for a, a clear path of growth. Do you, you remember, we, I remember we jammed about this yeah, a yeah, long absolutely. time ago, right? Yeah. It's like no one yeah. wants to just come in for a job, all right? They, they, they want to come in knowing that there is a clearly defined path for them to grow within an organization. And... <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous, but if we translate that exact same thing over to our families, I mean, I think our kids thrive on knowing, you know, what is, you know, what is the path to becoming a tween, to a teen, to a to a young adult, to... I'm going to put junior adult out there in some cases. <laughs> to, to an actual cadet, adult. A cadet, cadet adult. A cadet adult. <laughs> like, yeah. but, but, but I think, yeah, I, I think us, you know, uh, you know, being parents, I think that, that makes us kind of a better leader because I, I think we can take that exact same approach. But I'd love to kind of get your thoughts on that. 
Yeah, it, I think for me, it, it I learned it. I learned when um, I learned I learned it very early in in when I started. And this was even I wasn't working for myself. I was mm-hmm. I was um, I was working in another business at the time. That the way I think, well, I'll I'll, I'll tell you a story, and I'm sure you can I'm sure you can relate to this, Jason. Mm-hmm. So when you know, for when when you when you're expecting your first child, it's an exciting experience, right? Yeah. You, you know, you you you're doing everything in preparation. You you know, you're getting you're getting all of the ducks in a row and the house ready, and and it's all it's all you know. It's you're all working up to this massive crescendo, mm-hmm. and you know, our much better halves feel it because obviously, you know, they they're intimately. <laughs> Um, involved in the in the in the process, right? But from a from a from a from my point of view, from a from the from the father point of view, uh, or non birthing parent, I think they say these days, um, it didn't really dawn on me just how real being a parent was until my wife Heather had given birth to Lily. Um, and they were in the hospital and they said, all right, everyone needs some rest, dad, go home. Um, and I drove away from, I remember driving away from the hospital that night thinking to myself, holy shit, dude, your life has just changed. And it had changed, you know, I've, I had, you know, we had like everyone, you have nine, 10 months to get used to the idea, but geez, it didn't get real until that moment, that time. And yes. from then, from then on, I reckon my management style changed because that person that I was managing was somebody's son, somebody's daughter. Yes. Um, you know, there was a not that there wasn't respect for that relationship beforehand, but geez, it exponentially increased afterwards. Um, can you remember a similar I do. time? I, you know what? I when remember. Your I was, was actually born? I was actually just talking to. Uh, a young dealer principal the other day. Uh, shout out to Tanner if he's listening to this. Um, and he's expecting his first. And, and 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 he's like, man, do you mind if I ask you a couple questions? I'm like, of course, absolutely, go for it, right? Um, he's like, well, like, what was like the first day like? And I'm like, the first day was a total just mind fuck. Honestly, that's exactly <laughs> what I mean. It was. It was somehow I couldn't almost physically remember, you know, the, you know, the twenty some odd years that happened prior, you know, to to so it didn't, to, it, to her, it wasn't to important, up. was it? It wasn't. It was like it was. It was almost like a, even though it was only a day, less than twenty four hours. Mm. Honestly, I I don't know if I could even. It almost just felt like a distant memory. Everything that happened up to that point was literally just a distant memory. And and it's like literally my whole world restarted, you know, from that point. And it's interesting now since you kind of bring this up, because I think this is a good segue into our next topic was is, you know, in the beginning, it was um, I mean, obviously, I knew where my time was, right? Like it was just spend as much humanly as much time as humanly possible with this little being. You know, and I find over time, I'll be completely honest with you, Cameron, that that kind of faded away. And and honestly, by our third child, Luke, um, you know, uh, the first two years, I, I honestly don't think I was really around, you know, to be completely honest. Yeah. You know, so yeah. this kind of goes into yeah, that I, next topic, I, um, that, you know, that I, work I tra- life balance. I tra- Sorry, yeah, I, I traveled. A, I traveled a fair bit when um, for work. For work, yeah. I traveled a fair bit. So, um, you know, there were there were times where I was away for you know, a couple of nights a week um, on the odd occasion, and you know, you 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 you, you know you 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 you, you kiss the you kiss the the little one and the wife goodbye and say I'll see you at the end of the week, etc. And you know, obviously, you know, as a family unit, you're learning as a, you're learning what to do and, and you go, Oh yeah, I'm out. See you later. I'll, I'll be, I'll be away. But you know, it, I just remember that time that night, it was, you know, if if the epiphany was, you know, up until this point, you know, you've been all consumed with getting that next level on the corporate ladder or getting that pay rise or, you know, hitting that target. And all of it at one moment, it became insignificant to say, Mm -hmm. okay, 
Cameron, this is why you're here on this earth now is to be a dad and to, and to, uh, you know, to quote, to quote you, to get, to get that 18 year product development done and make sure that you, 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 um, you haven't damaged it at the other end. And, uh, and the uh, you know they're an ex- they're acceptable to the market, which is a uh, it, you know it's it's a great epiphany. But I think if, from my perspective, I think we we kind of you, you're you and my you and I are the, in a similar age bracket where our fathers were you know the 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 family unit. Our fathers were the the hunters and gatherers. Yes, you know it, it was the male's job to go out and you know, dominate the world, put food on the table, provide for the family, etc. And I think our generation has kind of learnt that that thinking is so old. You know, like I remember mm-hmm. when my 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 I was always obsessed with, you know, making sure that we didn't have any worries financially and professionally and everything was paid for and you know everyone, you know, it was no one went without. But you you realise that that's not really what it's all about when you break it down to the family unit, right? No, you know, it really isn't. And I think this is, you know, kind of that perfect segue into kind of our next topic when we talk about balance. You know, at some yes. point in time, we, we we lose the balance. Like, it's like we were able to kind of like maintain, you know, it, it's like they, they come into our lives and then they're, it's just, it's so new, right? So time is very, very heavy there. And then it seems like the scales start to move, move, move more. And then we kind of get back into this, this professional routine. And, and, you know, we, I don't know, I, I just hate to say it, we lose the balance, but, but, and I hate people saying the word balance. I gotta be honest with you because I feel like they think like there's this, like this mystical, like, well, if you're spending 40 hours on your business, then you should be spending 40 hours with your children. And I, I don't think that's exactly what balance is, but I'd love to kind of get your spot. Like what does work-life balance actually mean because we say it so often but i don't really hear people going in depth enough to actually kind of define it but i'd love to get your thoughts i i like simon sinek's actually interpretation of work-life balance have you ever ever heard that yes i have it's a great one yeah and it and and yeah basically to summarize uh, i'll try and remember it the best i can but to summarize it he he basically says in short people people get consumed about work life balance and associating that with a number of hours so like you mentioned before if you're mm-hmm. working a job and working 40 hours therefore you must spend 40 hours with with your family etc but he he actually links work life balance with happiness and and determining de- determining how happy you are in your particular environment so um you know obviously you know in the in the ideal world you know you you should be equally happy at home and you're equally happy at work not not all of us are, are fortunate enough to to have that to have that level of emotional satisfaction i suppose but it's not the point he makes is it's not necessarily intrinsically linked to the to the hours and the punch clock that you're putting in every day it's it's actually more to do with your with your with your level of happiness but it's the the thing about balance is it's it's utopia isn't it you know like mm-hmm. having the having having a hundred percent balance a hundred percent of the time is utopia we're never gonna you're never going to live there you know you might get close enough to see it uh, or get to receive a postcard from it, but <laughs> it's 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 always something that you're working towards. Um, and the the key the key to it for me is is making sure that you're as happy as you can be in your professional life and as happy as you can be in in your in your in your in your in your, uh, your family life. You know what? Um, I, I really like that visual. Um, I, I, I think people look at this kind of work-life balance and I just, cause I love what you said. So I want to go a little farther down that, that rabbit hole. Um, I, I think they look at this work-life balance as something that's like a finish line, you know, like I'm running towards something and I must cross yeah. this finish line. But what we're saying here in reality, what it kind of sounds like what we're saying here is that, you know, work-life balance is, is, is not necessarily a finish line is it's always kind of a moving goal. And it, it seems Absolutely. like it's, it, <sighs> I think if we break it up almost into kind of a daily, 
you know, working goal is that, you know, we're going to get up in the morning, we're going to step up to the plate, we're going to swing, we're going to, we're going to swing at the ball. All right. In this case, that ball is going to be called work-life balance. Now, sometimes we're going to connect and it's going to be a home run, man. It's going to be out of the park. It's just, the crowd is cheering and you just, you were productive at work. All right. You got, you got everything you need to get done. Your team at work is ja- is jamming. Your goals are getting hit. You come home, you spend real eye to eye contact time with your kids. You play a game of checkers or you do something or you help them with their homework. And like you get at the end of the deck. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. But yeah. then there are days that it's just not you swing and you just F and miss. You know, yeah, so, you bugger up both of it. Right? You bugger up your home life and you bugger up your work life, right? <laughs> <laughs> but but it's but it's but it's totally true, right? I just I think people out there just think that this is something that they just need to achieve, or it's something it, it like there's it's a finish line, and I just I don't I don't think it's a finish line. I think it's a goal that we try to attempt to every morning. Look, look, guys, and, you know, everybody out there that's watching, and listening, you know, if you're gonna have days at work that you're just gonna feel like, damn. That was like I had one yesterday, Cameron. Like it was like four o'clock. It was four o'clock in the evening, and I went, "What the hell did I do today? Like, what did I actually yep. accomplish today?" Right? And you know, when I think about that, and I think some people kind of feel that way about their work-life balance, and and then there's there's this societal like scor- scorning that goes on. Oh, oh, you did not just do that, did you? Like, you know, and I feel that takes this toll on on you where it's just like oh man and i feel like to the point where i think some people just never actually step up to the plate to swing well it, yeah and it, it's a bit of a byproduct of the modern world don't you think yeah like with you know like you know you look at well we've never been we've never been more connected now than what we have been like we're you know the you, you you've got all of the different pipes that we communicate through and you know, social media obviously plays a massive part with keeping you engaged in whatever platform you're looking at. Um, and you know, you we we see these we see these uh, you know influencers out there living their best lives, and you know, being parents of the year, chefs of the year, holiday maker of the year, <laughs> homekeeper of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, the knock-on effect from that is that uh, people aspirationally look towards them and say, "Why, you know, if I'm less than that, I'm." I'm failing, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm an imposter. I'm no good. I'm, I'm, I'm really clearly bad at this. And it is, it is, it does take a toll on, it does take a toll, I think. But one, one thing I think, one of the shining lights actually out of the last couple of years, and, you know, I won't mention the C word, but <laughs> is that I think people now to a degree value authenticity more than the 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 show if that makes sense yeah no i think i i, I totally agree with you I, I mean i do feel like there's this level of just kind of just just being authentic and and maybe you're right because last 24 months we've had to spend more time with ourselves i guess right <laughs> yes <laughs> um, where you know I, I i agree with you i do kind of just kind of feel this higher sense of maybe awareness with a lot of the people that i'm out there talking with and and, and, and you know, you know, no, I'm, I'm with you, but I think this is kind of a good segue kind of to, into that last topic we want to talk about today. Is like, you know, um, you know, it, it, are we too connected to our professional lives, right? Like, are like, you know, you, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like sometimes, you know, um, we get so wrapped in what we're doing, you know, we're too connected, and has the last high, last two years kind of slowed us down where we actually realize we're too connected, you know. But you know, how do we? I guess my question here is like how do we stay connected to our professional lives, but not at the detriment of our families? I'd love to kind of get your thoughts, man. For me, I, at the moment, I think it comes down to discipline and, and self-discipline more than anything else. Um, Jace, I think, you know, like, Mm -hmm. you know, we're in a world, we're in a world obviously where the, our, our digital devices, our supercomputers that, you know, they, they bing bong at, at, at everyone else's um, whim, isn't it? You know, one, one, one of the great things that was said to me not so long ago, we, it was that your email inbox is somebody else's to-do list. So, you know, 
thinking thinking that through laterally, you know, someone sends you an email that's for you to do something in action at the end of it, where, it, you know, it. therefore, you know, we're always, we always have this workload kind of in front of us that, you know, depending on how you manage it and how you discipline is, it determines your mental state in many ways, you know. So, you know, there's some of us and, and myself included in this, you know, you, ha- you have a, there's a level of anxiety attached with having too many unread emails. I, there um, is, 100%. You know, <laughs> trying to think so, how many unread emails I have. Oh, 4,000. There we yeah. go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I remember, I remember when, yeah, when, I, when I was a kid growing up, as I said, we were, we were the Ford dealers and I, I was born in 1976. I'm 45, 46 years old this year and and needless to say, um, the era, the area that I grew up in and you grew up in was pre mobile phones. Nobody had mobile phones back then. Exactly, they weren't even a thing. Um, I think the only mobile phone that I knew of was the size of a backpack, and uh, you know who wanted that? And um, we would we would jump on our, um, our my my father would would um, leave work early on a Friday afternoon. He would swing by home. He would pick up mum and the car would already be loaded. He would pick up myself and my two brothers and we would um, venture, drive a half an hour to where we had our our boat moored and we would all jump in the boat, load it up and we'd be up up on the boat uh, enjoying a great weekend because the dealership didn't even open on a Saturday or a Sunday. (laughs) So it was, yeah, remember those days? (laughs) And the only connection that my father had with the world was the um, a two-way radio that he that he pulled out of the one of the spare parts trucks every time we went away, just in case something happened, right? But it, what that meant was that the time that we spent together up as a family on that weekend, there was no distractions. Yes, it was right. pure family. It was pure family, and. You know, now we can't even wake up in the morning without checking our emails before we even get out of bed. It, it, so, you know what? That's so true. You know, Cameron, I, it's look, I, I fight with this, right? Because I find this level of efficiency, you know, um, you know, look, I, I think as, an, as a society, we'd like to brain, like, we'd like to blame the technology. Right. It's so easy. It's so easy to blame the technology. Well, social media is addicting and that's why I spend too much time there. And this is and I and, you know, I get 72 emails in an hour from work and I need to respond to them. I have my, you know, but I think what it is, is I don't I don't blame the tech. I got to be honest with you. I personally don't. Right. I personally don't blame the tech. I mean, I blame the user. Um, more than more than the tech, because you know this this is just simply a tool, you know. But it's a tool Absolutely. that I can actually. Absolutely, it is. It, it's a tool that not only I can connect professionally, but I can also connect to my family in a big way. You know, I was talking to a gentleman, you know, the, uh, the other day, Matt, um, on the same podcast, and uh, you know, his his primary form of connection with you know his his daughter, who's now in college is they text message each other almost every at the same time every single night and you know it's not a long conversation it's just a few things you know but it's that routine so it's not necessarily a tag and they, and they look they stay on t- they stay in touch with each other through social media you know i mean i feel like even like my parents feel more connected to my kids you know because of my wife's social media efforts right and it's like oh i, you know, yeah. I saw those pictures it the is other day and stuff. yeah it is but it's it's for me it's the discipline you and know there you so go. That is, it, that's it you know as, as i said at the start it, it, it comes down to the discipline side of things you know like it, it's only a problem if you allow it to be exactly. a problem and and how how you manage it is 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 has more of a bearing on um, that mental health side of it, I believe, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, the, the, just because, just because you get a notification, it doesn't mean you have to respond straight away. You know, it's, it is, yeah, there are, there are, you know, it, you, it's the way you manage it and the way your discipline is on, on how you, how you cope with it is, is probably the greater toll, isn't it? It is. You know what? Hey, I'll give you a little hack. I started doing this. Someone actually showed me this, so I'm not going to like, take credit for this but someone else showed me this and um i actually schedule uh play time in my phone 
with my kids between six and eight o'clock at night is kids it's kids playtime now what's unique about me scheduling that in my phone is a i get a reminder uh b my phone goes into do not disturb mode and yep. i can't get notifications text messages or emails until right after eight o'clock and my phone goes ding, 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 ding. <laughs> you know, <it's> just... <laughs> but i always thought that was yeah. a really super cool cool hack hey uh cameron i know we're getting towards the uh kind of tail end of our time today and this has been just a great conversation man and cameron i can't tell you how much i appreciate you just just being open and just authentic and just real i mean you know, I, I've approached a lot of people about talking about this pod, about this, uh, doing this podcast and talk and covering these topics. And, and I get it. Like, not, not everyone's super comfortable about, you know, just being open about their successes and their wins, you know, when it comes to family, very much so open about their successes and wins when it comes to business. But family is a little different for some reason. And I think that I, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, these podcasts will kind of change that and really kind of, you know, create that that business approach you know to parenting but before i let you go uh cameron for everybody out there that's watching and listening right now i would love to maybe connect with you what what's the best way to do so oh all the all of the pipelines work you can uh, obviously linkedin i'm pretty i'm uh, i'm i'm pretty uh, pretty active on linkedin so um yeah connect with me on linkedin cameron creswell at, at uh, automotive talent if you search for me on linkedin that way um you'll definitely definitely find me um and I promise not to be too much of a pest um, in uh, in response to you on that. Um, and obviously our email as well, automotivetalent.com.au. Um, that has our contact details in there as well. So, um, you know, if you want to reach out and connect, send an email or uh, what have you. Um, yeah, more than happy to more than happy to, to shoot the breeze, so to speak. The world the world is always better when you have more friends, Jason, in my uh, experience. Wouldn't you agree? You. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. And Cameron, thank you for being my friend. Oh, <laughs> oh mate. I love you, brother. <laughs> Thanks, man. This was a lot of fun. Have yourself an amazing evening. <laughs> <laughs> and and enjoy the day. Thanks for tuning in to the Business of Parenting podcast with your host, Jason Harris. Don't want to miss new content? Be sure to check out the full podcast library at strategywithjason.com to stay in the know. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Happy podcasting.